Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for the uh, introducing and thank you all for coming to my talk. Uh, this, uh, today, I'm glad to present our work on automated detection of shadow domains. This is a collaborative work between University of Delaware and Tsinghua University. And I'd like to appreciate the collaboration from Dr. Zhou, uh, Quan, Bao Jun, Professor Hai Xingduan, and my advisor, Dr. Hai Ning Wang. So <clears throat> before introducing domain shadowing, let's first have a look at how domains are abused previously. In old practices, the attacker purchases malicious domains from registrars like GoDaddy, and then set up malicious contents on the, uh, on the domain. The malicious domain is then used to either uh, compromise new victims or used for botnet command and control channel. The malicious domain plays a critical role in uh, attracting new uh, victims and in hiding the hosting infrastructures. Basically, these newly purchased malicious domains can be, identified, can be distinguished from benign ones in three aspects. The first one is registration information. Reputable registrars usually have strict regulations to prevent domains being abused. Therefore, attackers usually purchase malicious domains from infamous registrars. Also, bad domains normally get blacklisted shortly, and thus they are, all, uh, they are usually registered for a short time, for example, one year. There also exist patterns in malicious domain names. Malicious domain names usually contain meaningless words, and they are lexically similar to each other. This is mainly because good domain names are, have been registered and, and good domain names are expensive. Finally, most benign, uh, most benign domains have local visitors in terms of geolocation. However, malicious domains are usually visited by a more diverse set of population. Based on these characteristics, several effective domain reputation and blacklisting systems have been developed, and malicious domains can get detected even at, le at their uh, registration time. To fight back, attackers have recently uh, adopted a new strategy called domain shadowing to build their attack infrastructures. Instead of purchasing new malicious domains, attackers start to compromise legitimate Apex domains and then spawn malicious subdomains on them. For example, it has been reported that several reputable uh, registrars uh, like name.com and hover have been breached and a massive dom uh, domain uh, credentials were leaked. So to better explain domain sharing, let's first have a look at a real world example uh, discovered in our study. In this case, the attacker hosts ransomware on a, on a shared domain, and the shared domain is spawned on the legitimate domain, apbgarden.com. In order to redirect uh, users' traffic to the shared domain, attackers can either uh, compromise popular websites or use malicious advertisements. By inspecting the profile of the shared domain, we find that APBGarden.com has been created since 2011, and it will not expire until 2019. The data from the Internet Archive also shows that APBGarden.com has been active since at least 2013. Based on this data, we can have a high confidence that APBGarden.com is a legitimate domain, and it's a victim of domain shadowing. Compared to newly purchased malicious domains, Domain sharing has several advantages. First, shared domains inherit the reputation of uh, legitimate Apex domains. And therefore, there is no suspicious registration information anymore. Also, there is little restriction over subdomain creation. So now, attackers can uh, use meaningful, uh, meaningful names for their shared domains as long as the name has not been occupied by a legitimate subdomain. And thus, there is no longer patterns in domain names. More importantly, there is no additional cost to create subdomains, and thus attackers can create infinite number of shadow domains. 
In summary, the, these advantages of domain sharing make it effective in evading existing domain reputation and blacklisting systems. And we need a new defense against domain sharing. To this end, we analyzed thousands of manually confirmed shared domains and successfully identified two key observations. So to illustrate, uh, let's revisit the previous real-world example. These are the subdomains on apbgarden.com. We can see that the shared domain, aaa.apbgarden.com, is mapped to this IP address, and this IP address is in Russia. However, all other legitimate subdomains are mapped to different IP addresses in a different country, US. Therefore, our first observation is that the shared domains are usually deviated to their legitimate siblings. Now let's have a look at the uh, domain sharing from another aspect. We extracted the subdomain, uh, all subdomains hosted on the same IP address as www.apbgarden.com. Obviously, most of these subdomains are also shared domains, and probably they belong to the same uh, campaign. This leads to our second observation that shared domains on different epochs are usually correlated. Based on these two observations, we design a novel detector for shared domains called Woodpecker. Woodpecker aims to detect shared domains created in bulk by attackers. In particular, we don't expect individual shared domains used in targeted attacks like APT to be detected by Woodpecker. And we leave it as a future research direction. Woodpecker is built and tested on three sets of domains, including the manually confirmed shared domains, popular and non-popular legitimate domains, and two monthly subdomains submitted to VirusTotal, a large open security scanning service. Then for each uh, then for each domain, we collect the passive DNS and web connectivity data. Based on these data, we extract and compute 17 features. Finally, we evaluate using five machine learning classifiers, including neural network, random forest, logistic regression, uh, linear SVM, and naive BS. Next, I will describe each component in details. So first, we manually confirm, uh, we, we collected about 26,000 uh, manually confirmed shared, shared, uh, shared domains on about 5,000 Apex domains. These uh, shared domains are basically collected from professional security blocks. For legitimate domains, we collected about 9,000 popular domains consistently ranked top 20,000 in Alexa top list from 2014 to 2017. And we also collected about 2,000 non-popular domains randomly sampled from a, ne uh, from a campus network. In order to model the deviation and correlation char characteristics, we collected the passive DNS data and web, web connectivity data. The passive DNS data is collected from two sources, the 360, a large security company in China, and Farsight. The pass, a, a passive DNS record usually contains six fields. The domain name, the DNS record type, the DNS data, how many times the domain has been resolved, and the time when the domain is first and last resolved. In order to compute the features in correlation dimension, we query the uh, passive DNS databases using both domains and their IP addresses. For web connectivity, we basically want to know if a subdomain is reachable from their Apex domain by following the links in, in their web pages. To this end, we use two data sources, the uh, web app machine and the common crawl. Based on these data, we, uh, ex we extract 17 features, and these features fall into four categories. The first category of features model the subdomain usage in three aspects. First, if a new subdomain is created suddenly, long after its uh, Apex domain has been active, this new subdomain can be considered as suspicious. Also, since uh, many popular names like mail and ns 
have been occupied by legitimate subdomains, shared domains will not be able to use them. Therefore, if many subdomains with popular names are hosted together, they are more likely to be legitimate ones. Finally, um, many legitimate subdomains can be reached from their Apex domain by following the links in uh, web pages. However, shared domains are usually isolated from their siblings. The second category of features measure the distance of IP, uh, hosting, uh, hosting IP addresses between subdomains and their uh, Apex domain. The, the distance of IP addresses is measured in three granularities, the IP, the S number, and country. The larger the distance is, the more suspicious a domain. We also count the uh, distinct number of Apex domain and uh, subdomains hosted on the same IP address. The third category of features model the correlated nature of shared domains. Basically, uh, most shared domains are created, used, and dropped simultaneously. Therefore, we compute the distribution of the first seen date, the resolution count, and active days for all subdomains hosted on the same IP address. Finally, many uh, shared domain names are created using templates. Therefore, we define two features to, cal to categorize these. And the first one is the diversity of domain name levels for all subdomains on the same IP address. And the second one is the subdomain name length uh, at, at each level. In case a subdomain has fewer levels, we align it to the maximum level and we set zero for the uh, name, we set the name length as zero for the added levels. Since several of our features uh, need to compute the distribution of a vector of values, we use the Jeffrey uh, divergence. Given a vector of values, we first compute the frequency for each, uh, for each value in the vector, and then we derive a new vector by setting by setting one for the value who has the largest frequency, and setting zero for uh, all other values. And finally, we compute the Jeffrey div divergence for the two newly derived vectors. <clears throat> so now we evaluate our approach using different machine learning uh, algorithms. This figure shows the results uh, of five uh, popular machine learning classifiers. Since we uh, achieve similar results using the data from both passive DNS databases, here we simply present the, uh, the results on far-side datasets. So we can see that uh, the neural network and uh, random forest perform better than nonlinear classifiers like logistic, logistic regression and linear SVM. And random forest performs best. There can be several reasons. First. It can be possible that our uh, labeled datasets contain, uh, contains uh, are dirty. Uh, for example, if a uh, for example a shared domain can be mislabeled as legitimate, and the set of manually confirmed shared domains can contain legitimate domains. Also, the values of several features can be inaccurate. For example, the resolution count highly depends on the vantage points where the passive DNS data is collected. For all of these problems, random forest can handle them very well. Since random forest performs best, our uh, forwarding evaluation results are all based on, the, uh, on random forest. We then uh, manually inspect the false positives and false negatives. One cause of false, uh, one cause of false negative is that a subdomain can have old snapshots in web-backed machine. <clears throat> For example, the extranet.milia.com. These subdomains uh, probably were abandoned by domain owners and then get revived by attackers for shadow domain. To improve old packer, we could discard these uh, old snapshots. However, the problem is to decide how old is too old, so we leave it as a future work. The false negatives can also occur in cases when the 
Children's domains are hosted together with their legitimate siblings, or when they are, they are hosted with only one or two other subdomains, in which case the correlation, dimension, uh, co the correlation features become meaningless. There are also six false positives. These legitimate subdomains um, are hosted in different countries with their apex domain and their other uh, legitimate sub, uh, siblings. Also, these subdomains were visited only a few times. Next, we evaluate how each dimension of features perform. And this figure shows the result. We can see that uh, the features in both dimensions perform quite well, and the uh, deviation features are only slightly worse. Therefore, the operators of Woodpecker can choose to trade a little uh, accuracy for higher efficiency because computing the correlation features is usually more resource consu uh, consuming. We also evaluate the performance of each category of features. We can see that, except for the uh, features of subdomain names, all other categories of features can have a quite good performance. Subdomain names uh, does not perform well mainly because, uh, mainly because most, uh, mo many uh, legitimate services like cloud platforms and uh, content delivery networks also use the randomly generated uh, subdomain names. And um, in general, from the results, we can conclude that it's almost impossible for attackers to evade or pecker without manipulating many features at the same time. Finally, we also uh, test the woodpecker using the data sets collected from virus total. During February and April 2017, we collected about 20 million subdomains. And woodpecker reports about, uh, about 300,000 domains as shared domains, which is about 1.28% of the total. We then use several heuristics to manually validate the results. First, we exclude the all subdomains whose uh, Apex domains have expired because we will not be able to collect sufficient evidence for these domains. We also ex exclude the, uh, we also exclude the uh, subdomains used in knowing fraud, CDN, and DNS services. Then, we confirm the uh, shared domains by finding those similar with known shared ones and those uh, which have been de deleted from their DNS servers. For the remaining ones, we manually inspect them. And finally, in total, we successfully confirmed about um, 100,000 100, shared domains and about uh, 12,000 remains unknown. Based on the evaluation results on virus total, we can depict the uh, trend of domain shattering. Uh, in this, uh, we can see from this figure that domain shattering has become, has become an increasingly rampant threat uh, since 2014. And for 2017, we only have the data for the first quarter. We also have two new findings about domain shattering. First, all, previous, uh, all previously exposed shared domains are exclusively used in exploit kit. We find that they are also widely used in phishing campaigns. However, we didn't find any phishing attempt targeting these compromised Apex domains, probably because these compromised Apex domains are not popular enough. There are also several uh, domain sharing campaigns use wildcard DNS records and thus no template is needed to generate the uh, subdomain names for shared domains. To conclude, uh, in this work, uh, we devised a novel detector for uh, domain shadowing called Woodpecker. Now, Woodpecker uh, characterizes domains in deviation and correlation dimensions and achieves a quite, uh, quite good detection performance. We also conducted a large-scale uh, measurement study highlighting that domain shattering is an increasingly rampant threat. 
Okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, you mean the expired uh, domains? Yeah. Uh, because for, for in this case, the uh, attackers compromise the uh, the legitimate domains which are still in use. So they are you you can find the uh, legitimate contents in these websites, and you can find many uh, legitimate information in, for example, Twitter. So it can be more uh, difficult for attack for victims to to find these, uh, uh, the difference, so to find the suspicion, suspiciousness of these uh, domains. So given that like who is data and other things that would only be associated with registration are asserted and not really verified in a strong way, how is it that much different in terms of finding out, you know, in terms of identifying this? I mean, one of the findings in that previous work was that it's difficult to identify these changes, especially if it's a change of ownership that's not due to just simply an expiration. Uh, I'm sorry, so could you, uh, could you repeat? Uh, I didn't hear clearly, so. So you, you mentioned that the registration, uh, because it didn't change, that's one of the ways it's potentially different. But that doesn't necessarily change too much, even when you're dealing with you know, just regular changes of ownership. So, oh. I mean, yes, it's slightly different in the way that you're going about it, but how is the, the ultimate, you know, takeaway that they're abusing this residual trust that much different? Um, I think it's a, um, the, the uh, uh, yes, I think that it can also be used, but uh, um, the uh, um, but I think it's a different uh, technical for for attackers to use. It's a different strategy. Uh, that attackers can choose, right? They can uh, re-register re -register the expired Apex domains and use the uh, residual trust of the Apex domain. And she, they can also use the, uh, com they can also choose to compromise the, uh, the uh, non-expired ones uh, just to achieve the same uh, attack. So I, I hope I have. Uh, so we can discuss it later. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, thank you. I have one question. So do you have any idea of uh, how these domains can compromise? So is it password reuse or is uh, it uh, just password guessing? Um, in most of the cases, um, the domain registrars were breached. A lot of passwords and usernames were leaked. So that's the problem. Okay. And did you see any mm, service providing this, so providing domain shadowing uh, at a large uh, scale? I don't know. I think these are uh, passwords and usernames can be can bought from the uh, underground machine. So, uh, but I didn't check this.